Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I was going to make that the secret password to get into church this morning, but it's not a secret. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. It is a pleasure to be with you in God's house this morning to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Um, it's wonderful that you're here. Everything that we need for the service will be in your bulletins. The songs, the readings are in there. We will have some back and forth responses, some readings from the Bible, a message, and some prayers this morning, again, to celebrate Jesus Christ risen from the dead. You also will have gotten in your bulletin one of these. Please don't lose it. You'll have a chance to fill it out and hand it in later. There's a spot on either side of you in the pews with some pens for you there. I think that's everything, though. So once, one more time, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It is great to be with you. We will begin with our opening song as it's printed on, the, on page four in your bulletins, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Do not be afraid, said the angel, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. When Christ emerged from the grave, peace and life emerged with him. We sin in thought, word, and deed, in what we do and what we leave undone. For this we would deserve death, now and for eternity. Yet there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. With his blood, he has purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Those who die in Christ will live eternally with him. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O grave, is your sting? Come, let us worship the resurrected Lord. He is risen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. We humbly pray that we may live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Any children are welcome to come to the front for a children's message. Christ is risen. Oh, you guys can do a little better than that. 
Christ is risen? He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. That's what we're talking about today. Jesus Christ rising. So I want you to think about it this way. We're going to think about the life of Jesus in a, as we think about a chain. So you can think about Jesus' earthly life being born. Anybody here super smart remember where Jesus was born? Bethlehem, right? Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Then he went to the Jordan River, and he was baptized when he was 30 years old. Then do you know what he spent a lot of his time doing? He went around preaching and teaching and healing people and helping people and giving them food to eat. He did that for three years until Holy Week. We talked about Holy Week this last week in church. We had Palm Sunday. We had Holy Thursday. We had Good Friday where Jesus went to the cross. And a lot of you were in church on Good Friday. We talked about Jesus dying on the cross and being put in the grave. And you would think that would be where the chain would end, right? Death seems like it's going to be the end. Okay, that's the, that's the end of the story. But today we remember the amazing truth that it was not the end for Jesus. On Easter Sunday, the first Easter Sunday, some women went to go look at the tomb where they had put Jesus' body, and when they went to go look at it, they looked inside, and there was no Jesus in there. Pretty amazing. And they were really confused, kind of scared, and they walked away, and then, ah, one of the women saw Jesus. And he appeared to them, and he appeared to so many more people risen from the dead. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That's the life of Jesus. Now I want you to think a little bit about your life. You were born. I don't know exactly where or exactly when, but you guys were all born. And then your parents brought you to church, and then you, you, your parents brought you to be baptized in church, and they taught you God's word. And now you're growing up, you're getting older, and you're going to keep getting older. You can think way off into the future. Someday maybe you're going to get married. Oh boy, someday you're going to have a job, maybe go to school, at college. All these things are going to happen to you. But then what happens to all of us is we also get older. And as we get older, our bodies stop working so well. And then we also die. Not really fun to think about, but that's what makes Easter so important. It's kind of an amazing thing. You have our life here, and you have Jesus' life here. But what happens is because Jesus rose from the dead, he makes a promise that you too are going to rise. So you can think about your life now being connected to Jesus. So you're going to get connected to him right here, connected to the chain of Jesus, and you're connected to him, and that means all of God's promises are yours, and Jesus rose from the dead, you're going to rise from the dead too. You're going to live forever with God in heaven, with all of your sins forgiven, What an amazing thing. So we're thinking Jesus rising from the dead, awesome for Jesus. Also awesome for you too. And awesome for all of us. That's why we're so happy. Jesus has forgiven all of our sins. He's risen from the dead. He promises us we get to live forever with him in heaven because we're connected to Jesus and our sins are forgiven. What an amazing thing. One more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let me say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for conquering death and promising us eternal life through you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, everyone. Our Old Testament reading is recorded in Job chapter 19. In the middle of suffering and trials, the Old Testament believer Job holds on to the promise of the resurrection from the dead. Job 19, 23 through 27. Job says, Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my sin has been destro- my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another, 
how my heart yearns within me. This is God's word.
Our New Testament reading is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The Apostle Paul teaches us, first of all, about the, the proof of the resurrection, Jesus appearing to many people risen from the dead, and then he explains to us what it means. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, death has no sting. The power of sin to send us to hell is no more because Jesus has paid for it. 1 Corinthians 15. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is God's word. Please stand for the reading of the Easter Gospel. The Easter Gospel according to Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene 
Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll away the, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Christ is risen. risen Alleluia. You may be seated. A little while back, a skunk died somewhere in our backyard. I say somewhere because for a while I, I couldn't find the body. Looked all over the place, finally figured out later on it was kind of trapped on the back side of the fence, pushed against the ground, covered by grass. I couldn't find the body for a while, but we could sure smell it. I've told some of you this story before. Some of you smelled it for yourselves. We would go out on the deck trying to enjoy a nice spring evening. Then the wind would shift. And then we would smell it. And we would try to ignore it, push it out of our minds, but you might as well try to enjoy mustard gas, right? You're, it's not, not going to work. The women, we can guess, were maybe not trying to ignore it. They were trying to grapple with this reality that, that we experience that that death stinks. They were going to the tomb holding spices. They were going to anoint Jesus' body. That was part of their customs back then to honor their, their friend, Jesus, who had died. We have different customs today, but, but we still know that, that death stinks. And they were maybe trying to deal with this stench the only way they knew how. But you could tell as, as you read, they're, they're confused, they're sad, they're they're not sure exactly what happened or, or what to do about it. Because they were experiencing what, what many of us experience, and we all do eventually in life, that death stinks and, and the physical stench is just the smallest part of it. It's much more the, the emotional weight, the pain, the, to- the, the toll that that bears on you. It's like going through life with a giant backpack filled with rocks. You can walk, but it's pretty hard, and it's like you're walking through dense fog. You can go places, but you're, you're not always sure where you're going. I don't, I don't think I'm reading too much into this story because of the question that the ladies asked on their way to the tomb. They asked, who is going to roll away the stone? Which is a practical question, makes sense, but also it's one of those questions they really should have figured out already. The stone was not a problem that was going to take care of itself. Back then, their custom was to cut graves, kind of carve them into the side of hills, and then afterward, roll a giant stone in front of it to keep the grave robbers out. Those stones would often weigh more than a ton. So they went and they bought all those spices and they gathered together to go, but what? For why? Were they going to get anywhere? Probably not. And it's good for you guys to, to realize this is where those women were, not just physically on that first Easter morning, but, but mentally and emotionally. They did not realize it was the first Easter. They did not wake up that morning, put on their Easter best, put the egg bake in the oven, and say, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, when they saw each other. They were way down, walking through that, that fog of grief, trying to... Well, realize, okay, what's going to happen with that stone? Who knows what they thought was going to happen? Maybe Peter would come out of hiding and help them. But the, the problem was actually far worse than they realized. The Jewish leaders had gone to Pilate, convinced him to put a, 
a battalion of soldiers guarding the tomb so no one could break into it and steal the body. That's what they thought. And then Pontius Pilate, the religious leader, had, or the, the secular leader, he had sealed that grave with his own, his own ring, which was basically a message to everybody. If you mess with this tomb, I'm going to put you in a tomb. Stay away. So the women had really no idea how, how big that problem was that they had with, with the stone. But then, realizing that even that problem with the stone, even though it was far bigger than they realized, was not their biggest problem. Jesus had not been just their friend and their teacher. He had been for them a savior. Someone who had appeared and had claimed to be the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament prophecies, who had claimed to be the, the payment for sins, who was proclaimed to be the Lamb of God, who would take away the sin of the entire world. He had made all of these big claims about himself, but Jesus, a Jesus who stays locked behind a stone in a tomb, could not fulfill all of those promises for those women. Remember the first promise that God had made way back in the garden. I'm going to send a savior who's going to crush the head of the serpent even as the serpent might strike at his heel. At that moment, it really seemed like the opposite had happened, right? Jesus had tried his best to give one to Satan, maybe struck at his heel, but what happened? Oh, ultimately, Jesus himself was crushed. Who will roll away the stone? That was a bigger problem than those women realized, and not even close to being their biggest problem. Who will roll away the stone? What about sin? What about their sin? Those women were good, pious, religious women, but they knew they had sinned and fallen short of God's glory. They knew the wages of sin is death, and, well, that meant death was going to be a problem for them. They would stand before a perfect, holy, and righteous God, and and they knew if they stood before that God with their own sin on their own account, they would be separated from that God for eternity. So who will roll away the stone? They had bigger problems than the stone. What about sin? What about death? Who will roll away the stone? What about the rest of their lives? Jesus had, had lifted them up. He had given them dignity and meaning, taught them that they mattered to God, that they were precious in his sight. But now Jesus was apparently dead behind that stone, so did their lives even matter? Were they just bits of dust that were going to turn back into bits of dust eventually? Who will roll away the stone? That was a problem, a big practical problem, but not even closest to their, their biggest problem. It is good that we remember that, especially on, on Easter Sunday. We all come to, to church with lots of problems, Big problems. I don't want to minimize those at all, right? Life can be very, very difficult. We can be weighed down by grief and pain. We can have to pay for groceries, right? Even that gets more and more expensive. How, how hard is that? You're going to school. You're trying to get good grades, do all of these things. Does he like me? Does, do I like him? How do you, you figure all this out? Lots of problems that all really matter. But they don't really matter as much as, well, what about sin? What about death? What about my life? Does it have any meaning? Am I here on purpose? Am I here due to a random accident? Who will roll away the stone? That's, that's a problem, but really there were, there were far, far bigger problems than that for, for those women and for you and I too. You might remember how God first gave his, his law to his people. He gave the Ten Commandments to Moses and he wrote it on what? Two big pieces of, of stone. Those Ten Commandments are good for us to know God, God's law, how he wants us to live. But they also expose for us how often we fall short of God's glory, how often we don't fully live up to our, the expectations of a perfect and righteous God. So what about that stone? If that's sitting on your back and you stand before a righteous God, what, what would happen? So part of what Easter Sunday does is we think through our different problems in life and we learn to prioritize the big ones. Sin and death and, and heaven and hell and, and we come into church with all these other problems but then we, we hear this message that as we, we walk with those women toward church, toward the, the tomb, God tells us to look up. Those women, 
They walked toward the tomb. They asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. I don't know if that's what the angel said to those women, or if they knew that answer already. <laughs> Maybe they had to figure that out later on. But it was true. As they were lost and confused and in the dark, God was working. And that's always how it goes. That's why we can have hope and faith for our lives, even when we don't see God working. It's faith, but it's not blind faith by any means. It's based on, on exactly this. That while those women didn't know what was going on, God was working. Other Bible accounts tell us that there was an earthquake. Angels came down from heaven. The ground shook. The soldiers fell down like dead men. The stone was rolled away. And Jesus was not there. He had risen from the dead. And he appeared later on to those women and to the other disciples and to, like we, we heard before, 500 other people, flesh and blood. He let them feel him, touch him, a, a real human body, physically risen from the grave. He was risen, risen indeed. And that's good to know, good for Jesus, but good for us too. Because he clarified many times what this means is now my payment for sins that I made on the cross, it has been and accepted. Every single sin has been accounted for when I said it is finished. I meant it and God accepted it. Every sin is paid for. This is a promise for you and I too, like we talked about with the kids. Our lives by faith are, are connected to Jesus. So what's true of Jesus is, is true of us. We do wear out and die in this world. But by God's grace, that's not the end of our chain. That's not the end of our lives. Through faith in Jesus, we, we rise. We go to heaven. We stand before God in glory and the resurrection from the dead on the last day. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This teaches us to prioritize everything else in life. Okay, this matters more than everything else. God took care of this in a bigger, more beautiful way than I can ever imagine. Is he going to take care of everything else? Oh, yeah. Of course. Not blind faith, but faith built on, on the empty tomb of Jesus. It took a, a while for that message to sink in for those women. The end of our reading is kind of stark, right? They walk away trembling and bewildered. Still trying to figure out all of this. That would change. They would see Jesus. They would talk to each other. They would figure out what all of this means. They would learn how to build their lives on, on that truth. And you and I learn that too. It is true. It is finished. Sins are completely paid for. It is also true. We have to continue to learn and grow and appreciate what, what this means for us. Think about Job at the, the first reading that we had. Some of you know Job suffered. He had a very difficult life. But he learned that he had a good, gracious God. He had a redeemer. So he made this amazing proclamation that you heard. Okay, I'm going to take a stone and I'm going to write on that stone, I know that my redeemer lives. And in the end, I'm going to live too. God gives you the gift of, of faith like that. As you learn, as you grow, as you build your life on this truth, as you continue to hear and grow in God's word. God teaches you to have strength and courage in the face of adversity, like, like Job, like those women, like the apostle Peter who was restored. God gives you that gift too. He teaches us to understand, to apply, and to, to appreciate the gift of God in, in Christ Jesus our Lord, risen from the dead. I was talking to a, a friend a couple weeks ago, and I asked him how he was doing. He said, I've been better. Okay, why? Well, a mouse had crawled into his air duct and died. Unfortunately, on the other side of the L bend, so his choices were either take down the entire roof, basically, or just wait it out. <laughs> wait out the smell, eventually it would go away. That's the best we can do if we're faced with our own problems in life. We can wait it out, hope it goes away. You know, maybe it'll get better someday. Maybe it won't. Wait it out. What Jesus gives you, 
is so much better. Not just wait it out someday until you get to heaven, but right now, you have hope and peace and joy to know that God is on your side. You, you stand on that right now. And for eternity, in the face of death itself, you hold on to this promise, I know that my Redeemer lives. And in the end, I too will stand upon the earth. So maybe we can ask about that stone when we're faced with all the other problems that we have in life. If you're faced with stress and anxiety and wondering, is it all going to work out? You can say, oh yeah, the stone has been rolled away. If you are faced with guilt as you come into church and maybe you're remembering things that you should have done that you didn't do and you, you know you can't even live up to your own expectations, much less the expectations of a perfect and holy God, you ask yourself that same question, who will roll away the stone? Oh yeah, it's, it's already been rolled away. And if you do face death itself, that exact same question is exactly the one to ask. Who will roll away the stone? By God's grace, it's already gone. Jesus was not there. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Please stand. We will confess our faith responsively with the, the words of the Apostles' Creed printed on page 11. Living in a world where people believe that the universe was formed through chance and accident, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Living in a world where people are confronted with the guilt and punishment of sin, what do you believe Jesus did for you? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Living in a world where people are without hope and certainty, what do you believe? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue now with the offering. This would be a great time to fill out that Connect card. You can put it in the offering basket as it passes by.
We will continue with the responsive prayer built, um, printed on page 13. The message of the angels to those women is God's message to us again today. Do not be afraid because Christ has risen. God is with us. So we, for that, we give him thanks and praise. We'll pray as it's printed on, on page 13. O Lord God, our strength, our song, and our salvation, you fulfilled your promises by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Thanks be to God. You give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In your compassion, you sent Jesus, the good and now living shepherd, who laid down his life to rescue the lost. Drive out all doubt and gloom that we may delight in your glorious victory. Make us instruments of your peace as we bring the good news of hope and new life to those around us. Guide us in the use of all that you have entrusted to us, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Risen Lord, live in us that we may live for you. Merciful Lord Jesus, grant healing to the sick and strengthen the faith of the suffering and dying. Assure them of your abiding presence and comfort them with the hope of eternal life. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private prayers. Gracious Father, you have restored to us the joy of your salvation. With happy hearts, we come before you and say, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Father, we bring these petitions to you, confident that you will hear and answer them, for it was your only Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the glorious Father, who by his power raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, give you the spirit of wisdom to know the hope to which he has called you. And may he preserve you in body, soul, and spirit until our own resurrection on the day of Christ Jesus. Let all God's people say amen. amen. Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Oh, it's
Good morning again. Big thank you to all of our musicians and everybody who helped plan for the service. Mike wants to give them a round of applause. There we go. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. It was a privilege to worship with you today in God's house to hear, hear his message of strength and, and hope and peace. I'd love for you to stick around. We have a lot of snacks. We could use your help eating them. If you head out and take a hard left into the, into the wing over there, there's a bunch of snacks and coffee back there. Um, we'll have some kids' activities starting at 9.30. So kids, you can kind of listen for the bell. When the bell rings, there's a, a tent out in front. We'll meet there and we'll start with some songs and, um, and then we'll move inside for some snacks and, and a craft as well. So that starts at 9.30. Again, we'd love for you guys to stick around but not too long. Uh, parking space is a little limited around here. Uh, so uh, if, if it gets to be about 10 o'clock, you probably get out of here because uh, yeah, we, we could use the parking for a second service. So that 10 o'clock is still a ways away. Have a, you can have two cups of coffee, a bunch of snacks, but probably not three cups. Um, so, uh, any other announcements that I'm missing? Again, thank you all so much. God bless your new weeks. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah.